pickle today is bringing fun and recreation to millions. It is used by hunters, fishermen, and campers to reach places inaccessible to the ordinary car. For overnight trek through the high Sierra Mountains in California, racing through mud at Yakima, Washington, or a race in the New Mexico desert, it's a deep deal for rugged dependability. Numerous Jeep jamborees and rallies are held each year throughout the nation. One of the largest jaunts is over the Sierra Mountains in California to Lake Tahoe. 940 persons riding in 320 vehicles participated last year. Lunches were distributed as the vehicles left Georgetown on highways that soon were replaced with what maps call Jeep trails. It is only 61 miles from the starting point to Lake Tahoe, but the trip requires two days. It was rock and roll for drivers and passengers as the vehicles picked their way over the mountain trails. Rough going, there's no doubt about that. To the participants, it was fun, a chance to get outside and rough it for two days. There were always rocks to go over or around if possible. Rocks and huge boulders left by the ice glaciers of long ago were strewn everywhere. Often, narrow passes between boulders were just wide enough for the vehicles to squeeze through. And occasionally, a mountain stream had to be forded. After crossing the streams, it was back. More swing and sway as the pleasure bent crowd continued its way on to Lake Tahoe. Now and then, a vehicle would become stranded atop a rock, but there were always buddies to give a helping hand and the journey would continue. After crawling along over the rough terrain, a rest stop was welcomed by everyone. These rest stops provided opportunities for the campers to view closely the beautiful scenery around them and gave camera bugs the chance to take scores of photographs. For others, the rest stop meant washing off dirt and grime. And perhaps a little horseplay. Or some sunbathing on a rock. Before fording some streams, it was necessary to disconnect the fan belts to prevent the splashing of excessive water on engines. But generally, the vehicles crossed the water without any difficulty. Friendships and acquaintances on a trip like this flourish forever. Men and women are bound together by common interests in vehicles and camping. Members of Jeep clubs throughout California were on the trip. There also were entries from other western states, plus some from New York, North Carolina, Illinois, and Ohio. A leader was in charge of each squadron of 25 vehicles. Contact between the various squadrons was maintained through radio. At Rubicon Pass, the campers enjoyed a huge steak dinner prepared over open barbecue pits. This was followed by an evening of entertainment around a mammoth campfire. Next morning, it was back on the trail again. Destination Lake Tahoe, now only 16 miles away. But it wasn't all rocks. There were some stretches that were extremely dusty. The campers couldn't help but think of the cool swim awaiting them at the end of the trail. And then the mountain safari was ended. The caravan disbanded and many sportsmen headed homeward over paved highways, while others sought that cooling dip and relaxation in the sun. At Yakima, Washington, there's another group of Jeep enthusiasts known as the Ridge Runners, who enjoy a unique type of activity. It's the annual world champion Jeep Rodeo, run over a quarter mile track that is literally a sea of mud. 
To assure that the track will be muddy, the Ridge Runners hose it down for two days before the rodeo and also during the event. The more mud, the better they like it. Water holes were a foot and a half deep. When the vehicles hit, muddy water went flying, almost obscuring the driver's vision as it splattered men and vehicles. After a few rounds, it was nearly impossible to distinguish one vehicle from another. Occasionally, a vehicle would stall out despite the homemade mud guards on the radiators. The rodeo consisted of a series of races around the mud track, a hill climb, and an obstacle course. Winners were determined on a point basis. After each race, pit men were kept busy hosing the mud off the vehicles and drivers in preparation for the next event. There were a number of entries from other Jeep clubs in Washington and one from New Mexico. 4,000 persons watched the events. To save shoes, some spectators crossed the track in their bare feet. Roll bars and safety belts were standard equipment on all vehicles participating in the rodeo. After splashing through the mud for the final event, the vehicles scooted up and down a steep hill, across an obstacle course, and back on the trail. Chet Thompson, a Yakima auto mechanic, won the rodeo. Wally Klingle, defending champion, placed third. Competition was extremely close, with only 30 points separating the top five winners. At Truth or Consequences in New Mexico, the International Jeep Derby is a part of the annual Ralph Edwards Fiesta. This derby extends over a three-day period with contestants covering an 18-mile course each day. Last year, it drew entrants from as far away as Denver, including this 56-year-old oil man, Floyd Tucker. The Derby is billed as the world's toughest race. It is a real test of vehicle ruggedness and driver skill. Often, vehicles literally fly through the air after hitting bumps or gullies as they race across the desert at breakneck speeds. These gasoline cowboys handle their vehicles with the same ease and skill that true cowpokes use with their horses. Instead of using reins and spurs, they urge their steeds on by stomping the accelerators, hitting the brake pedals only when absolutely necessary. The race was witnessed by 7,000 persons from observation points along the course and at the finish line. Vehicles started at five minute intervals and raced against the clock. The driver with the least total time for the three days was the winner. A scoreboard was maintained at the finish line for the benefit of drivers and spectators. Lonnie Byers of Mesilla Park, New Mexico finished second with an elapsed time of slightly over two hours and 22 minutes. He placed second the first day and was third on the other days. Some portions of the course followed high ridges where a miscue by a driver could send his vehicle rolling down into a deep canyon.
Another contestant was Jack Berentz, a Gallup, New Mexico prospector with a Doctor of Philosophy degree who finds Jeep racing an enjoyable sport. He finished ninth. This is Dave Scott, a garage proprietor in Truth or Consequences. He won the Derby with a total time of two hours and 21 minutes. Racing for the third year, Scotty placed first one day and second and third on the other days. His best time for the 18 miles was 47 minutes. Merchandise and cash totaling thousands of dollars were awarded as prizes. But regardless of awards, Many of these drivers, and others too, traveled the course on weekends just for fun. Winner of the hard luck prize was Pepe Lara of Mesilla Park. His vehicle turned over the first day at the foot of this hill. Determined to finish the heat, he righted the vehicle alone and walked to town for more gasoline. Rules prohibited one contestant from helping another on the course. Pepe's lost time on the first day was too much to overcome, and he finished last. The course led through deep ravines, but Dick Claxton of Phoenix, Arizona, went sailing through them with ease. He finished seventh. Steep hills also were numerous along the Derby Trail. All the gasoline cowboys kept their steeds in four-wheel drive continuously. Leon Johnson of Elephant Butte, New Mexico, was the fourth place winner. Third place winner was Guy Martin of Truth or Consequences. He was the only driver to turn in times of 46 minutes for the 18 miles. But he lost five minutes one day because of a flat tire. Watch him as he speeds toward the finish line. And here's Scotty, the winner, as he crosses the finish line on the final day of the Derby. Two kisses from the Fiesta Queen were Scotty's next thrill. <laughs>